Welcome back, everyone. I am back, Flower Kid. Today we have the skin tutorial that I said I was gonna do when we hit a thousand subscribers. We hit a thousand subscribers like two months ago, but then I got a bunch of work and I didn't I didn't stream and I didn't make YouTube videos, but I'm back and here we go. So this is the second time I recorded it. The first time I did it with a face cam, this time I'm doing it without a face cam because it just gets in the way. And I've simplified it to the, the absolute most simple things that I can. I don't want to make this a long video and I don't want to make it a complicated video. I want to give everyone a basics on how I make skins, but more of an understanding on how you guys can make skins so that, you know, just just trying to cover all of the basic questions. Um, so let's go. Now this skin tutorial is going to cover most of the basics. I don't know exactly how the files work on a Mac computer or a Chromebook. I know that it is possible, but I can't show you how because I don't have either of those. I'm working on a Windows computer. The biggest issue that I know that those two operating systems have uh, when it comes to making the mod file is the zip. That, that, that's what this whole thing is in. So the way to make a mod is you need to make a zip. So let's get, let's go into tutorial. Now you see here on my desktop, I have a folder called skin tutorial. I will have a link in the description of this video for you guys to download a zip file. It has two things in it, two folders that you need. Um, the assets is basically just a little something to get you started. It's got everything you need for the AK-47, the Sniper, and the SMG. I chose those three skins because they seem to be the ones that people like the most. If you want to make the rest of the assets yourself, you can do that with every other other weapon, and I'll show you how. But I've only put those three in there so that if you do want to take this further and learn and get better, you should know how to make these yourself. And then the second one, we have the custom skin, which has uh, some sample artwork that I did so you guys can use this to practice with if you want and then the mod file that you will need So download this skin tutorial zip from the description Now making a custom skin as, as a couple of steps you need to start with your base to work on Once you've decided what weapon you want to make a skin for so if we go into the assets folder here we can see we've got a list which has all of the uh, all of the weapon numbers and what what those weapons are, um, and you need to know those because you can't change the names of anything. When you're making a mod, if you change the name of something, it's gonna break. So don't change the names. If you need to know what weapon is what, use this list here. So in this folder, we have the FBX files, which are the 3D models of the AK, the sniper, and um, the SMG. So you can use these in a program like Substance Painter or Blender or Cinema 4D or any 3D program. I'll show you how to use it in Substance Painter a little later in this video. The main thing you guys probably want are the textures and the stencils. Don't forget the AOs, keep these, never delete them and always use them. But you want to probably start with the textures here. So these are the base textures of the weapons. If you don't know how textures work, every 3D model needs to turn into a flat square to be able to paint on and that's what these are and so to make a skin you need a file that looks exactly like this the colors can be different the design can be different but the layout of the of all of the shapes in all the places needs to be exactly the same so this is the sniper this is the AK-47 and here is the SMG we then have stencils and this is what everyone asks me how I make or how I get these or find these. I made these myself and you need to make the other ones yourself if you want to use more of them. I'll show you how to, but you do need a 3D program. But I use Substance Painter so that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. So in this folder you have the AK, the Sniper and the SMG. And then last but not least we have the AOs, that stands for Ambient Occlusion. You don't need to know what it is, you just need to know that you're supposed to use these and don't forget to use these because they make your guns look good. I've given you again the Sniper, the AK and the SMG. If you open them, you can sort of see they look like the texture maps except it's all black and white and some bits are darker and some bits are lighter. Basically fake shadow. So if you don't put these on your gun, your gun will look 
really fake and cartoony but once you put these on over the top of your texture it'll look more realistic and nicer and shaded and very good quality so don't forget these all right so guys that's uh that's it for the assets folder that's all you need to know about them uh, let's 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 dive in to a skin let's make a custom skin I'm going to do this on the internet in a program that's kind of like Photoshop except it's free and it's online so anyone should be able to do this. Open up your Google or your Chrome, oh, that's the same thing isn't it? Open up your Google or your Edge browser or Brave or Safari, whatever you want and go to um, Pixlr, you can search Pixlr if you want another one. There's another one called Photo P. As you can see, it, it basically just looks like Photoshop, but it's online. I haven't tried this one. I've been using Pixlr. As you can see, these are the two last skins. Let's delete those. We don't want to look at those. Um, I've been using Pixlr because uh, I don't know. It just seems nice. I'm not gonna do 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 do. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on how to use these programs. I'm just gonna quickly make a shit skin and then test it in game to show you guys how. So on Pixlr we click open image because we're going to work off the base texture and we're going to find our skin tutorial folder with the custom note, the uh, assets and textures and we're going to do a sniper. So as you can see this is what it looks like when it opens up. I'm going to make this skin in, in like two minutes so it's not going to look good, it's just an example of how. So you open the base texture adjustments let's make the uh, saturation black and white apply we do some levels as well um, I want to I want to actually boost it uh, okay this I'm gonna make it pure white so now we're just gonna make a new empty and empty layer I'm gonna get my pen um, I don't I don't know what to I don't know what to draw really uh, I have an idea select the color I want we'll do like a pink do some wavy stuff and then and then we'll make a new layer and we'll do we'll do a we'll do a, a blue so this looks horrible it looks just horrendous don't do this so now i'm gonna get the liquify tool and i'm gonna i'm gonna it's a bit laggy because this is this is on the internet so ah oh, look at that look at that Woo! this looks absolutely horrible guys when i i don't suggest you do this when you actually want to to do this um you know put some more thought into it i'm gonna turn these off for a second and i'm gonna make a new layer and i'm just gonna select the barrel and um certain parts of the gun to make just a flat color the scope and the barrel maybe i don't really know and then i'm just gonna fill these in with with the solid color okay so this is my skin it looks it looks trash but now we need to put in the ambient occlusion so we go a new layer click image and then it lets you open an image so you go back to your assets and AOs pick that and we're working on weapon one because that's the sniper we click open and it pops right exactly where we need it to but it covers everything up so what you need to do whether you're in Photoshop or Paint or Sci or Photo P or Pixlr you need to change the blending mode there it's it's in a different spot on most programs but you need to make the blend mode multiply so this is my trash two minute skin I'm now going to export that, save it, and then make sure the weapon name is the same. Make sure it's a PNG and 1024 by 1024. Any smaller and you lose detail, any bigger and it just wastes file sizes, which is not good. And then we can download that. If we're going into the custom skin folder, we can just drag this into here. Don't worry about these for now. We're going to rename this because I've, I've downloaded it three times. Just to weapon one. You want it to be weapon one or weapon two or weapon four. Whatever gun you're using, it needs to be named exactly that. So now it's time to put this texture into the mod and test it in game. If you open this zip, you'll see that it has textures, weapons, skins, but nothing else in it. Inside the skins folder here, this is where you put textures if you want to make something glowing or animated or breathing effect but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that later if we open this and go in the textures and then the weapons 
you can drag weapon 1 inside the weapons folder. It needs to be in the right spot. Not in the skins, but just in the, in the weapons area. Weapon 1, weapon 2, they go in this one. So now I'm in Krunker. You can see my account here. I'm going to select the sniper rifle and I'm just going to select the default skin because that's the one we're replacing. Now we just need to click on mods, wait for this to pop up, click on load mod up here and then it says drop mod file or cl cl click here. So you need to get your zip, not the texture, you need the zip folder with the texture inside it and drag that into there. And if it works, it should say success. And if it doesn't, it won't. So you need to make sure it says success. And you can see my horrible sniper over here. Oh, new game. Okay, so here we are. This is my sniper, as you can see. It's uh, It looks a bit funky, um, but you can see it's got the blue scope and the blue barrel like I wanted. Um, and it's got the wavy effects all over it. And you can see the fake shadow. And it's got the fake shadows you can see on the handle and the scope in the magazine. So this is how you make and test a skin. Didn't miss a single shot. Uh, all right, guys, if you've made it this far or you skipped ahead in the video, this is the wonderful substance flower kid section of the skin tutorial where I'm gonna show you how to make these stencils, how to do these drawings and how to put them onto the 3D model using the program Substance Painter. Before we get started, I need you guys to know that Substance Painter is not a free program. It costs $20 a month or you can buy it off Steam for $200 or, or $140 or something. Uh, it might be cheaper in USD, but you can buy it off Steam as a one-time payment or you can pay $20 a month depending on which one you want to do. So let's start by opening Substance Painter and then making a template. Okay, so one Substance Painter loaded, you need to file, new, and then select your file. This is how you select a 3D model. Assets, and then here are, here are the three assets that I've given you guys. We're doing the Sniper, which is weapon one. So we open that. Document resolution, 1024. I'd like to put this on 4K, but you need to remember to when you export the skin, 1024, but I do 4K and then just click OK. Don't worry about these settings. The weapon will load up and you can do this in Photoshop or Blender. Blender is a three Blender is a free 3D program as well. So what you need to do is go to the side of the gun. On this program, I hold shift to lock it in place and it snaps to the top or the side or the back or underneath or whatever. If you hold shift, that's what that happens. In Substance Painter, if you don't know how to rotate a camera or do a control or something, you can just hold down Alt and a little thing will come up down the bottom you see there. It'll tell you how to rotate your camera or zoom your camera. And if you do the same thing, but you press shift, it'll come up with a different different controls. So that's that's a way you can see all the different controls is just by holding shift or control or alt and it'll pop up. So you get the side view and you need to make sure up here you change it from perspective view to orthographic view. I don't know how to do this in Photoshop, but in Blender it's the same. You just need to make sure that you're in orthographic view and you can see it from directly the side. If you see on perspective view and you zoom in, you can see as I move around, it looks 3D and I can see the bottom of the gun and the back. But if I put it on orthographic, it's completely 2D, 100%. No matter how much I move, it'll always stay 2D. I can still rotate it, but when I snap it, it's in 2D and that's what you need. So from there, I just like to give it a flat white color. Make sure it's just pure white and make sure I'm viewing the base color. In Blender, you just need to give it a white texture. You can even make it emissive if you want it to be really bright. And then in Substance Painter, I'm going to change the display settings and I'm going to make the uh, activate anti-aliasing because that'll make the model smoother. Make it full screen. I'll drag it out a bit so that it fits in my entire in entire screen. And then this is what I use as my template. I, I take a screenshot of this. It'll open up. I right click, save, drag it into my photo program here. And then I get my selection tool. You can do this in Photoshop as well. Select anything that is um, that you don't want and delete it. And now you can see here, 
I have uh, I have the template. I'll just change the background color. And if I give it an outline, the outlines are useful because when we put the texture back onto the model, it's like a safety layer, I suppose. So this is how you make a template. This this is this this is our oopsies. This is our template right here, and you can draw right over the top of this and use that as your as your uh, image. I've given you three templates to use. You can just click and drag the sniper and then look at that. Look at that. Look at that beautiful template. You have a sniper. I will select this file and do the multiply thing again because multiply basically means anything that is white is see-through and anything that is dark is not. So if I draw, as you can see, anything that is white on the gun is completely see-through and then as it gets darker and shaded, it covers that up as well. So with my template and the image that I've attached in in the folder, the, the, this this thing that I drew drew before, there's two of them. If you if you take this sniper and put it over the gun, over the over the, the, the what is it? Over the uh, ah, dude, I'm actually having a brain fart right now. Over the drawing, as you can see here. Look at that! Look at that! Look at this! Isn't that amazing? You can see this, I've made it perfect, it's perfectly lined up. So if you want to customize this or make your own or whatever, all you have to do is get the template and then put another layer underneath it and just, just start drawing. Make sure the top layer is multiply and you can draw anything you want underneath that and you will and you will be able to see what what is happening you you can you can make your own texture like this okay but i'm not going to do that because i already have this one and this one here the reason this one is blue with a black background is this is what's going to be used for the glowing bits so if you notice the blue glowing bits are exactly the same as the shiny bits on this one. That's because when I drew this, I duplicated the shiny bits and gave them a back background. And you want to save both of them separately so that you don't lose anything. But if you look at both of them, they line up perfectly. And when you're working with glowing things in 3D applications, you need to make sure the background is always black. The reason for that is anything with color will glow. So if you don't want something to glow, you need to make it black. That's why the background is black and only the blue bits are showing because those are the bits that are going to glow. So now I'll show you how to project this in the Substance Painter. Okay, so brand new file, you've loaded your weapon in and uh, you've set it to orthographic. Now we need to take the colorful one and the black one because that's the glowing bits and we need to drag them both into here this thing will pop up and you just need to click texture texture or the the top one or the middle one don't do the bottom one because that's annoying that'll just import it forever so you want to do one of these two but i i like to do the middle one and then click import and as you can see these are the two textures here so now we make a new layer we can probably use this one but i always delete the layer and make a new one because that's what my brain does because i'm stupid and then over here you'll see this this rectangular square thing and if you hover over it it says projection that's the key word if you're using other programs i believe they can do this but you'll have to search on how to do it in those programs so i'm just going to explain substance painter so we click on the projection and it'll be this big white square and that is your texture. You want to load in your custom thing. So if we scroll down here, this is the projection settings. We can turn all of these off because we don't need these, these extra boxes. We just want color. As you can see here, this is the color bar where you can select the color of whatever the square is. Or you can drag in your custom texture. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So if you press tab, it'll make it full screen. And then if you hold S for scale, you can drag it and rotate it. Don't do this. So you hold S and then right click to make it bigger. Fill up your entire screen and then use your normal controls to control the model underneath it. Once once you let go of S, you can see it sort of goes see-through. So you can move the model around and the image will stay in the same spot. So now this is the this is the tricky bit. You need to line it up perfectly. I'm going to do my best. I'll line it up as best as I can. That looks that looks okay. Nope, that looks good there. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my brush bigger. It's the same same controls as Photoshop. You can use the little bracket things to make it bigger and smaller. Make sure symmetry is on and settings. Make it mirror Z because that's how 
Kranka's weapons work, you need to make it on Z, not X. Make sure it is down the middle of the gun. It doesn't have to be exact, It's it, it doesn't really matter if it's not exact, but the more in the middle the better, I suppose. And then we can just start painting, and as you can see, this is how you get your 2D image onto the 3D image of the weapon. Make sure you cover every little bit, you get the trigger and, and the little bars of the sniper and everything. All of the little bits to make sure you cover the entire gun. And then what I'm going to do is not move your camera because if you move it, the uh, position changes. I'll create a new layer and then above here where it says layers, you can see texture set settings. If you can't see texture set settings, it might be down here. And if you can't see it, click on Window, Views, and then tick the one that you need. You can tick these and have a look at what they do as well if you want. But you need the texture set settings, and then click on that. And where it says Channels, Plus, and find the one that says Emissive, because Emissive is Glow. That's what we call it in 3D programs, Emissive or Emission. And then for this one, as you can still see, we have our pink picture loaded. Instead of the pink picture, I'm going to turn color off and turn emission on because that's what we want to make the glowy bits. And then we can drag our black texture onto it and you can see the glowy bits light up. And then once again, we just need to paint over the gun. And there you go. This we can, You can now change your view back to perspective if you want. You can do whatever you want once, once you've applied the textures. And look at that. Here is our gun. Isn't that nice? I love it. It looks all pink and blue and drawn and then you have the glowy bits if you rotate the the sun you can see the bits sort of stand they're still glowing in the dark so the last thing we must not forget to do is the ambient inclusion remember that texture that we dragged in before this one here we need to put this back onto the gun you can do this in two ways you can either export this texture as it is and then take it into photoshop and put it on top in photoshop or you can just do it directly in this program by going to the texture set settings and click bake mesh maps and leave all of these settings the same it doesn't matter if you want to make this number higher to get a better resolution you can do that you just ignore all of this leave them ticked and then just click bake once it's baked the gun will look a little bit different it'll look a little darker maybe but that doesn't matter we just click new paint fill layer and then we find here in our shelf we need to find the bit where it says textures here we are and under all of the textures these are the things that it just baked this one this one this one this one but we only need this one as you can see here it's the ambient occlusion it looks a little different but it's the same thing and we just drag this onto our base color and as you can see it just added the shadows onto the scope and in, in, in the handle and, and stuff like that. So if we change this from normal to multiply, and look at that, look at that. It adds the shadows back onto the gun. Oh, it's Flower Kid from the future. Hello, I made a mistake because I am stupid. I told you before I'm stupid. Um, you, you, you make a new layer, that's correct, and you drag on the ambient occlusion. That works, that's cool. Then you make it multiply, yes, that's correct. But then you need to drag this underneath your glowing layer because if you don't drag it underneath your glowing layer, you may have just seen just then. Uh, it blocks out the emission, it blocks out the glowing stuff. And also you don't really want shadows on your glowing bits. So you need to make sure that your glowing layer is above the ambient occlusion. Okay, bye. So once that's done, all you have to do is file export textures and it'll bring up this big ugly dialog thing you need to just select your output i'm going to put it in the custom skin folder click select pbr metallic roughness i've made a custom one for krunker but by default it's pbr metallic roughness you can just leave it on that and then delete the things that you don't need file type png and then make sure 1024 remember in pixlr how we had a png 1024 and then for substance painter make sure the padding is dilation plus transparent and make this number one and that just saves the file size makes it a bit a bit better click export and as you can see it exports all of these things you can just close that once it's done delete the ones we don't need and now you have this big monstrosity and this one with the glowy bits and that's that's our weapon that is how you take a 2d image and project it project it in substance painter now to test this in game 
what you normally would do is make sure that it's named weapon 1 and weapon 1e but because we're going to test the glowy bits and and the breathing effect we're going to choose a different weapon so i'm going to choose the magma core because that is the sniper that i always use for this sort of stuff and the magma core is weapon 1 underscore 108 and that's all you have to do and then for the emission weapon 1 underscore 108 underscore e and then we can drag those into our custom skin mod textures weapons not in here but in the skins folder because now we're replacing a skin we drag that in there click OK and that's all we have to do so now that I'm in Krunker I'm gonna customize select my magma core sniper as you can see here and then we load the mod here's our custom skin mod open let it load gets a success and then look at this baby hell yeah it's hard to notice because it's a very bright map but you can see the glowing bits you can see them breathing now this is how you test out a uh, a glowing skin you can do it for any other weapon just remember if you want it to be glowing you need to replace a skin that is already glowing otherwise it won't work hey suck on that So if you join the Krunker Bunker Discord, if you're not in here already, you can open Krunker and there'll be a little Discord symbol up the top. And you'll see all of these different channels down the side. I've, I've hidden a lot of them because I don't use them, but you need to find the one that is Mod Info. You click on this, you select this, and you download this. You, you copy this and paste it into Google. And then it will download the entire game with all of the textures that you need. And it, it'll look like this. You open it up, it'll be models, sound, textures. You can get all of the all of the weapon models in here. And all of the textures, weapons, skins. And here are all of the weapon skins. So if you extract those, you'll get all of these in here. So if I want to replace an SMG and I want to make sure that it's glowing, I just need to find one that I know already has glowing parts on it. So here's one that I made before. This is the SMG Wild Claw. This is what it looks like. And here's the glowing bits. So this one is number 131. I can just replace that and then it'll replace this. And you can do this with any 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 gun, any, any skin, anything that you want. You just need to find the number and make sure you name it the same thing. And the last thing, to get your gun into skin vote the community content where people can vote on your weapon thumbs up thumbs down there's a lot of stuff in here look through here and you can um, vote yourself and engage whether people like these or not and so to get your skin in here you need to check the pins and then you need to read all of this make sure you do read it because if you break the rules they will ban you or, or stop you or not they, they don't like you if you break the rules so don't break the rules and number six here it says dm moderator to get your skin posted in the channel don't ask skin makers so don't ask other people unless they're a moderator right here you'll see them you'll see them come online or offline whether they're online or offline you can message them and get them in here for you and i just want to say to you people skin vote does not guarantee you will get a skin in game if, if you see these skins they have 600 likes 600 likes 600 likes 500 or basically 600 600 700 800 the 900 900 700 blah 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 that doesn't mean that these skins will go in game it is up to the developers whether they like your work and get in game so even if you get lots of votes and it's not get added don't get discouraged you need to keep working and keep posting because they do look and if you post once and never ever again there is no chance you'll get that added because if they don't like it they don't like it but you can't let that get to you and you need to keep posting if they see you post one skin every week and they see your name come up and pop up up and over and over again and they like some of the stuff you do your chances of getting stuff in game is so much higher so don't stop and keep working and keep practicing so that's that's i'm gonna cut i'm gonna stop the video there i don't want to keep talking because i have an hour video to edit now i'm done goodbye i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial please ask me questions if you have any questions i will try to answer them i can't guarantee i know everything but i hope this gives you a basic understanding on how to make a skin and how to test a skin and how to make glowing bits and, and animated stuff. I tried to cover all of the basics that I could 
The rest is up to you guys. I think I've given you enough information. Other than that, if you guys have any suggestions on other videos you want me to do, please leave your comments down below. Please let me know. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. And thank you for a thousand subscribers. I love you all. Goodbye.